Good morning. My name is David Ernesto Munar, and I'm president and CEO of Howard Brown Health, the Midwest's largest LGBT healthcare provider in the Midwest. Today should be a joyous day uh, because members of the General Assembly and our state's governor have gathered here to sign legislation into law to advance healthcare options for people at high risk of HIV. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court ruling just announced would erode health care protections for millions of people, depriving them of their right to control their own bodies. The right to choose is fundamentally about individual agency over your own body. It's about access to health care and economic opportunity. It's about the right to make decisions for yourself and your family without government interference. Reproductive rights are LGBTQ rights. Howard Brown will continue to fight for LGBTQ liberation every day by continuing to affirm our patients and their families and helping them reach their health care and wellness goals. We provide comprehensive sexual and reproductive health care to tens of thousands of patients annually. This includes counseling, STI and HIV screening, contraception, pregnancy testing, OBGYN services, and leakage to pregnancy termination services for patients who need, him, need these services. Pride Month will culminate this Sunday in parades across the country commemorating the 1969 Stonewall Riots where fed up members of our community pushed back against the systemic oppression they were subjected to on a daily basis. On Sunday, we will do it again. Thank you for gathering at Howard Brown. Now it is my great honor to welcome Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker. We knew this day was coming. The extremists on the Supreme Court have made an abhorrent decision, one rooted in partisan games, leaving an indelible stain on our nation. Overturning Roe v. Wade directly contradicts the nation's history of expanding rights in the United States. It's an attack on freedom and liberty that our Constitution is supposed to guarantee. Right now, it's abortion that they're taking away. Next, it will be birth control and other contraceptives. Next, fertility treatment. They are coming to take away women's power to become mothers at the time of their choosing. And they are allowing states to criminalize the exercise of reproductive rights. Women and their doctors are now threatened with going to prison or being bankrupted because of the radical majority Donald Trump and his right-wing allies created on the Supreme Court. Here we are, exactly at the point many of us feared and even predicted. Privacy rights are being eviscerated right before our very eyes. If they can take away your ability to control your own body, there's not much that stops them from making marriage equality illegal and taking away employment protections for your beliefs or your orientation. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. We are headed down a dangerous spiral that will erode our democracy. This attack on personal rights is not new in the world. We've read this book before. I've read this book before. Maybe the Supreme Court will now authorize burning that book. If you want a glimpse into the future, you can look to our past. Just a few miles away from here, at the old Cook County Hospital, there was a wing once known as Ward 41. Ward 41 was dedicated to what they used to call septic obstetrics, or in layman's terms, botched abortions. From 1961 to 1965 alone, Ward 41 doctors managed the aftermath of over 20,000 illegal abortions. 
Because abortions were illegal, desperate women sought out desperate solutions. Hospital professionals from back then say what they saw was nothing short of horrific. Disturbing memories etched into their minds for eternity. They treated women who burned their insides with bleach and peroxide. Women whose uteruses were perforated with paintbrushes, cocktail stirrers, knitting needles, and wire coat hangers. Women who were nearly dead due to unimaginable blood loss and advanced sepsis. These women saw no other choice. They risked their lives out of desperation for just a semblance of control, and far too many died. Before Roe v. Wade, criminal abortions were the leading cause of maternal death in the United States by a seven to one margin. Those who did not die were left infertile, in perpetual pain, and permanently traumatized. I'm thinking about those women, those we've lost, and those who've been harmed. We cannot allow their deaths to be in vain. Make no mistake, in the many states where they will be illegal, abortions will continue. Now they will also be dangerous, they will be secretive, and they will be deadly. I'm here to say we cannot go back to Ward 41, Illinois. In Illinois, we will not go back to Ward 41. And for all the women whose fundamental rights have been taken away today, we stand with you. We will raise our voices, we will open our arms to help you, and we will protect your rights. To the right-wing office holders who today are cheering the Supreme Court's ruling, get your iron boot off women's necks. Hop off your high horse and know that what you're calling a celebration of life today will actually lead to death. The death of women in abusive situations, the death of women whose health is at risk, the death of women and girls who will still seek abortions, ones that are unsafe and performed by unqualified back alley butchers. Let me make this explicit and clear to women throughout our state, throughout the Midwest and our nation. Illinois will be a safe haven for the exercise of your reproductive rights. In Illinois, Roe v. Wade is still the law, and it will remain the law as long as we have a pro-choice legislature and a pro-choice governor. Here, we trust you to make your own decisions about your reproductive health. We will defend your right to bodily autonomy. In Illinois, we will hold firm to these rights and continue to work with stakeholders, many of whom are standing with me now, to expand them. To that end, I am informing the General Assembly that I will be calling them into special session in the coming weeks to more firmly protect women's reproductive rights in Illinois and address the challenges posed by this radical Supreme Court decision. I'm grateful to have the support and partnership of House Speaker Emanuel Chris Welch and Senate President Don Harmon in this effort. Together, the Democratic leadership in Illinois is committed to taking swift action to further enshrine our commitment to reproductive health care. I want to close by speaking to those who have the most at stake in today's decision. To the single mom juggling four kids and three part-time jobs. Illinois will fight for you. To the teenage child who endured rape or incest, Illinois will fight for you. To the marginalized and most vulnerable who are being attacked at every turn by transphobic or misogynistic or bigoted politicians, Illinois will fight for you. We will not turn back the clock. Here in the land of Lincoln, and the home state of Barack Obama, where we were the first to ratify women's suffrage 100 years ago, we will continue to fight for freedom, for liberty, and for justice for all. And now I'd like to bring up to the podium a relentless fighter and the house sponsor of the Reproductive 
Health Act in Illinois. Representative Kelly Cassidy. Thank you, Governor. Um, I spent the whole summer of 2019 at bill signings with you saying what a difference a governor makes. And that has never been more true than today. Um, I want to lead with such an important piece. I, I want, I, I, it can't be overstated. Abortion remains legal in Illinois. If you have an appointment, keep it. If you were thinking of making an appointment, make it. We are protecting choice in Illinois. As David mentioned, we were supposed to be here celebrating the passage of the uh, bill granting increased access to PEP and PrEP, um, which frankly is another part of the reproductive health spectrum as far as I'm concerned. And it's part of the work that we as a state have been very intentionally taking on to build in these protections, build in access uh, to, to the care that our, that our residents need. Some of us have known this day was coming for years, looking at you, Colleen, um, and others, uh, but Colleen and I have been working on this together for a very long time. No matter how you prepare, no matter how long you anticipate it, it still hurts. For those not in Illinois who today lost agency over their bodies, for those here and elsewhere who know that this decision is a roadmap to dismantle the, uh, the remaining rights, I, I've, I've referred to my life as a, as a Jenga puzzle, as a, as a queer mom married to a non-binary spouse with a, a second parent adoption to my kids, everything teeters on, frankly, Clarence Thomas's concurring opinion, where he set out the roadmap to take away my marriage, my kid's adoption, my ability to work. We've done a lot here in Illinois, and I'm so thrilled to hear that we're going to be coming back together to do more, because we have to. We built the firewall to protect, and it holds. But it's only as strong as the next election. We have two Supreme Court races on the ballot in November. The balance of the court hangs on those two races. And therefore, the Reproductive Health Act, our marriage equality laws, our civil rights laws, all hang by that same balance. When we come back together, it will be to create proactive supports for, for those here, the providers and patients that are here, and those that are coming here. And I am so grateful to have the partnership of my governor, my speaker, my colleagues in the General Assembly, to know that while all around us, reproductive health and gender-affirming care are under attack, we will protect those patients and those providers. We will make it possible for them to continue to provide care and receive care without fear. We knew today was coming. We didn't anticipate how hard it would hit. But we have a very powerful army. And nobody behind me is going to let up anytime soon, I know. With that, I want to bring up one of those bold fighters, one of my newer colleagues, Senator Christine Pacion Zayas. All right. No amount of time could fully prepare us for the egregious decision against bodily autonomy and self-determination our highest court refuses to recognize as a fundamental human right. 
the bottom line is this abortion saves lives no words can meet the level of grief and suffering this decision will cause days like today shake the foundation of our nation and it will go down as a shameful moment in our history we must hold fast to the truth that women and pregnant people and individuals assigned female at birth across this country have the right to their own body. They had that right yesterday, they have that right today, and Illinois upholds that right. It's an unalienable right. The Illinois Constitution, I swore an oath to support enshrines in its first article. All individuals by nature are free and independent and have certain inherent and inalienable rights which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I, along with all of my colleagues here in the General Assembly and our governor, will defend that. To deny access to these rights is to deny access to our humanity. And that is something no overreaching court can take from us. Now is that time to unite around the common, inalienable huma humanity to recognize that while Illinois will remain a haven for your rights, the only state in our region some won't stop until they obliterate our state's rights to defend a pregnant person's liberty. When I think about the effects of this decision, I think about how am I gonna explain this to my kids? I have a son and I have a daughter. And I have to tell one, you have rights, but you don't. I often make policy thinking about how can I explain this to children? This is not explainable. And children have that inherent quality to ask why. There's no way that we can explain ourselves out of this. I think of the people in Georgia, Texas, Oklahoma, and the 23 other states that have introduced hostile legislation limiting abortion and reproductive health care. I think of that pregnant person who may not be able to receive life-saving care due to a doctor's fear of providing that abortion. I think of the people who know they cannot afford to raise a child in these times of inflation and baby formula shortage in a country with the highest maternal mortality rates in the world. No requirement for paid leave following birth and a health care system that lacks equity and support, especially for black, indigenous, and Latine people. While I'm so grateful to live in and represent a state that protects our reproductive rights, I know it's a privilege to women and pregnant people and individuals assigned female at birth across this country seeking an abortion, we are saying that you are welcome in Illinois. We will fight for you, we will support you, we will uplift you, and we will keep you safe. For this primary on Tuesday and November's general election, game on. This is on the ballot. Now it's my honor to introduce Leader Collins. Thank you, Senator. Good morning. <sighs> Knowing the vicious, politically motivated decision by the Supreme Court to overturn Roe versus Wade, we knew it was coming, but it doesn't make it any easier to stomach, especially because we know that the consequences of banning abortion will be shouldered by black, brown, and low-income women who are already starved of resources, only to have their rights to bodily autonomy taken from them too. 
Not only am I disgusted that the highest court in the land has stripped women and gender non-conforming people of our reproductive health care rights, despite the fact that the majority of Americans support access to abortions, I am deeply afraid of what comes next unless Democrats fight back with everything we've got. I have fought in the Illinois General Assembly to protect access to abortion in Illinois, and I won't stop fighting until every woman and gender non-conforming person in America can get the care they need without interference from or persecution by the government. So Governor, I look forward to the special session to join my colleagues into continuing the fight. And joining me in that fight will be one of our leading Senate sponsors of the reproductive right legislation. And I'd like to call her to the podium, Senator Melinda Bush. Excuse me. This is a day the sun should not be shining. This is a day we should all be wearing black. Because women just lost their rights to be equal citizens in this country. If we don't have the, right over our, the rights over our own body, we are not free and equal. We are absolutely not free and equal. I was born in the 1950s. I'm a woman who grew up and marched in the streets in the 70s. In 1973, when Roe v. Wade finally became the law of the land. I have friends that had illegal abortions. That's what we called them. I had friends that went to New York because it was legal there and wasn't in the state of Illinois. When we passed the trigger law, HB 40, which took that trigger away should Roe be overturned, and then the Reproductive Health Act. We all believed we were doing what was right in the state of Illinois to say, we trust women to make decisions about their own bodies. That is absolutely the case today. We are so grateful to have a governor who stood with us, who made sure that people that live in Illinois are protected. But this is so much bigger than that. I mean, when you read that now, no longer draft opinion, this is about privacy. This is about taking away marriage equality. This is about taking away those things that they don't believe are our rights. When I woke up this morning, I kept refreshing my screen thinking, please not today, please not today. And I don't know how you felt when you saw the news, but I know I felt like my freedom had just been taken away. And look, I am well past the years that I'm going to bear children. But how do we look at our children and tell them that they have less rights in this country than we did? We have to stand together. This is no white flag. Be clear. When we passed the Reproductive Health Act in the Illinois Senate, and I know it's the same in the House, not one Republican supported the Reproductive Health Act. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. I talked to every one of them and gave them the opportunity to be part of saying it is important to make sure that we have bodily autonomy not one of them. Be clear, when we elected Donald Trump, and we did as a country, this is what we created. No one thought he was going to win. I don't know, maybe some of you out there did, I didn't. And this is what happens when you elect someone that is not there to represent the people of this country. This Supreme Court race in the state of Illinois is so important. There are two seats up, the first and second district, that if we don't take one of them, we should take both of them. Be clear, they are coming for our rights in the state of Illinois. And we are one election away 
from being like every other state, excuse me, not every other state, thank God, but we are one election away from that happening. Don't fool yourselves. So go to the polls, vote, be clear, be clear. This is a fight for our rights. It absolutely is, because they're coming for yours next. And I wanna to say to anyone who lives in a state outside of Illinois, we welcome you here. If you are looking to have an abortion, a legal abortion where you are safe and taken care of, we welcome you to the state of Illinois where we believe we have a right to make decisions about our own bodies. I have the honor of introducing, and I truly mean it, thank you, Governor. Thank you for calling a special session. Thank you for standing for human rights. And I get to introduce the Speaker of the House, Chris Welch, who um, also worked with us on the Reproductive Health Act. Thank you, Senator Bush. Last month, when that draft opinion was leaked, I stood here alongside my Democratic colleagues that rainy morning because Mother Nature was crying. She was weeping. We stood here alongside each other because we knew that in January of 1973, the Supreme Court got it right. We knew that that draft opinion was so detailed that this day was coming, but it doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't make it any easier at all because today this extremist Supreme Court got it wrong. The same people that tried to steal an election, and you see it in the January 6th hearings, stole our Supreme Court. Two of those justices that sided with this opinion today don't even belong on that court. Now you see why they stole our court. They got it wrong. Today, half of Americans are being told they don't have the right to make deeply personal health decisions without government interference. Today, half of Americans are losing basic human rights and bodily autonomy. Today, in 2022, my eight-year-old daughter will grow up having fewer rights protected by this country than her mother and her grandmother did. This decision by this stolen court moves our nation backward. And you heard Representative Cassidy say, Clarence Thomas has clearly signaled in his concurring opinion where they're headed next. It's harrowing to stand here reminding everyone that prior to Roe, nearly 20% of deaths related to pregnancy and childbirth were from abortions because safe ones weren't accessible. They just weren't. Once Roe went into effect, that number dropped to 1%. Women are not going to stop seeking abortions. They're not. What's going to happen is they're just going to die. In all of these states that are ready to take back rights, that's what's going to happen. People will die. And let us not forget the ripple effect for women's rights after Roe went into place in 1973. This was bigger than abortion. It remains bigger than abortion. After this decision, women could finally buy a home and get credit cards without permission from their husbands. That didn't happen in this country 
until 1974, one year after Roe versus Wade. The Supreme Court said women no longer could be excluded from serving on our country's juries. A woman was put on the Supreme Court after Roe. Husbands no longer had unilateral control of jointly owned property with their wives because women are full citizens in this country and deserve to be treated as such. When we recognize the basic human rights of a woman, these monumental laws and several others follow. I'm proud to be from Illinois, extremely proud to be from Illinois today. Illinois is a state that will not go back. Hear us loud and clear. We will not go back. I know that to be the case because of Kelly Cassidy, because of Melinda Bush, because of the strong women and advocates standing alongside me today. They worked hard in preparation for this day, and we hoped it would never come. And as a result of their efforts, we've safeguarded the right to choose in Illinois, regardless of what this stolen court says. And they will do everything in their power to ensure reproductive freedom remains the law of the land in Illinois, as it is today. Please know, please know that you will always have our support as long as you get out there and go to the polls and vote for people that believe you have a right to determine what happens with your own body. This power is in you, in your vote. Use it. And yes, we will be joining the governor in his call next month to make sure that not even devastatingly incorrect decisions by the Supreme Court will put the health of women in jeopardy here in Illinois. The House will be joining the governor in Springfield to continue to get the work done for the people of this great state. I'm happy to introduce the general, the man who recognizes that laws are important, that settled precedent shouldn't be overturned. Please welcome to the microphone our Attorney General, General Kwame Raoul. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, this morning I, uh, I, I uh, greeted my uh, daughter as I walked out of our home, and, and uh, she says, good morning. I said, no, not so good of a morning, and I gave her a big hug. Uh, she just graduated from the University of Missouri, and I was happy to get her the hell out of that state. Um, you know, in Missouri, they have a trigger law um, that now goes into effect that makes abortion illegal in Missouri. Not only that, they have proposed legislation that would give citizens the right to sue if women would come across border here into Illinois uh, to seek abortion and reproductive health care. In Kentucky, another bordering state, they have a trigger law that now makes uh, abortion illegal in the state of Missouri. In Wisconsin, they have a 1849 law that criminalizes abortion. And in Iowa, the Supreme Court overturned a decision that made uh, abortion a fundamental right. In Indiana, they're going to uh, seek to have a special session to, to make abortion illegal. And so, yes, I want to thank the governor and the m members of the General Assembly for the proactive work they've done to make Illinois a safe haven. I thank you. And we have stepped up to defend the Repro Reproductive Health Act in, in, in court. And we stand ready. I join 22 other attorneys general and uh, amicus brief arguing against the Mississippi law. But let's be clear, this is not just about the Mississippi law. If you look at 
uh, Justice Roberts' concurring opinion. This is about throwing stare decisis out of, out of the window. This is about uh, a head fake that some of these justices gave us during their confirmation hearing, saying that they recognize well-set precedent, and in, in essence, a lie to the uh, uh, U.S. Senate. And as other speakers indicated, that is a signal. Uh, that is a signal of, of what to come, what is to come for other fundamental privacy rights. And so we 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 stand ready. Uh, just yesterday, I gathered with the vice president and some of my colleagues from Washington, New York, uh, Nevada and importantly, uh, Wisconsin, and uh, I spoke to Josh Call, the uh, Attorney General of Wisconsin, and he and I, as we were walking into the White House, uh, discuss working together to make sure that we have adequate providers within the state of Illinois that might include Wisconsin providers. And so that's one of the things that we want to talk to the Governor and the General Assembly about. Uh, they are stand ready and we're working together to make sure that we do everything we can to have adequate providers. In 2020, we had nearly 10,000 women who came into Illinois for access to safe abortion. That number will grow exponentially. And we all must work together, stand ready um, to make sure that they have not only adequate access to safe abortion, but safe passage to the providers um, that will provide those services. And the Attorney General's office stands ready. We are empowered by the FACE Act to, to have civil action against those that would uh, try to create uh, uh, obstacles to women who will seek the, these services at these facilities. We stand ready. St we've already reached out to the Department of Justice to see where we can possibly uh, weigh in on the criminal side of those who might uh, try to put up obstacles seeking to women seeking abortion. And so uh, we stand ready collectively. And. I want to, as the chief legal officer of the state, reach out to the legal community at large and to advocates. We need you all. We need you all because there are some obscene laws in other states that may impact women who come into the state of Illinois, and we need to stand ready to defend all of these women. And with that, I'd like to uh, pass the mic to Cassing Hammond. Thank you very much. Today, the Supreme Court issued a ruling that denies women their fundamental right to abortion care. A group of attorneys, none of them licensed to practice medicine, have just committed medical malpractice. They're exposing women to the devastating, heartbreaking, and often dangerous effects of troubled pregnancy. Now, I know a lot more about this than those nine attorneys on the Supreme Court. I'm Dr. Cassing Hammond. I have performed complex abortions for more than 30 years. I have been responsible for abortion education at a major university hospital for more than 25 years. I have led the nation's largest professional association of abortion providers. In January, I helped form a group called the Illinois Coalition of Abortion Providers to preempt the very tragic consequences that I believe we will see from today's Supreme Court ruling. I haven't the time to detail all of the circumstances that cause women to seek abortions, but take it from a doctor, not a lawyer, that the women who seek abortions are your mothers, they are your sisters, they are your daughters, they are your wives, they are your friends. 
it is roughly one in four American women undergoing a procedure that is in many circumstances less dangerous than a single injection of penicillin. The women seek abortion for all sorts of reasons. They seek abortion because the pregnancy is abnormal, because they're ill, or because of social circumstances only they understand. Ultimately, we have to trust the women in our lives to know what's best for themselves and their families. Illinois doctors are going to continue to assure that abortion is safe, legal, and accessible to all patients. At this tragic moment, let's take one moment to honor the doctors and nurses and other healthcare personnel who make abortion a reality. Let us acknowledge that those who provide abortion care do so as a courageous act of conscience. We do abortions because of our professional integrity and because we have a moral compass. Abortion is an act that we understand, that demonstrates that we understand that reproductive rights are human rights, that they are fundamental to women's health, their equality, their dignity, and their self-determination. Thanks to Governor Pritzker, Representative Cassidy, and so many others who I'm honored to be with here today, Chicago and Illinois will for the time being remain a safe haven for people who need this very important procedure. And all of us who provide abortions, we're going to be here. We're still going to be doing abortions. We are still going to be here helping the women who need us at a time when they really need us the most. Thank you. Could you spell your name, please? I'm sorry? Could you spell your name, please? First name is Cassing, C-A-S-S-I-N-G, and last name is Hammond, like Hammond, Indiana. Good morning. My name is Megan Daniel. Um, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm a support coordinator with the Chicago Abortion Fund. This morning, when I heard the decision, I was on the phone with a person in Indiana that I've been supporting for weeks to get to their appointment. The cost of the appointment is nearly $1,000, and she has 40. She's a parent, and we've been working together for weeks to get her there. And at the end of our call, <coughs> excuse me, she thanked me for supporting her for the past couple of weeks and reassuring her that we would get her there together no matter what, because that's just part of what we do. And I thanked her for her trust in this vulnerable moment in her life. The mission of our organization is to advocate for reproductive autonomy and justice for all people by providing financial, logistical, and emotional support to folks seeking abortion services. We build collective power and foster partnerships for political and cultural change. We envision a world where everyone has the freedom and autonomy to create the lives, families, and communities that they deserve, that are healthy, safe, and thriving, free from criminalization and government interference. Illinois has long been a receiving state for people traveling from surrounding states for abortion care. And the majority of the people that CAF is supporting are from outside of Illinois. We know that this will increase with this court's sham decision issued today. In 2018, the Chicago Abortion Fund supported less than 200 people. In 2019, when the first wave of bans across the U.S. were introduced, this increased to 824. In 2020, with the rise of the COVID-19 pandemic, we supported approximately 1,600. And in 2021, close to 3,000. This year, from January 1st to the end of May, we've heard from over 2,500 people already, and we've called back each and every one. That's 2,500 people we've called back, putting us on track to support the most people in CAF's history so far. And we can't do this alone. We work in a constellation of providers and sibling funds, 55 clinics across seven Midwest states, and sibling funds across the entire U.S., especially in low-access states and in states that will see trigger bans and pre-row bans overturn the right to safe and legal abortion. 
We know, however, that the majority of abortions in the U.S. happen safely with pills, and so we hope that that access will continue for folks, even in states where abortion is criminalized and illegal. We fund appointments, we do insurance counseling, we pay for bus, train, and airplane tickets, we provide childcare, we send meals, we drop off pads and prescriptions if needed, we ask our caller what they need, and together we figure out how to get them there. The increase in how many people we support here in Illinois is due to many factors. It's a response to the increased need that we've been seeing due to more restrictions and bans the ongoing global pandemic and economic crisis, and the racism, transphobia, xenophobia, and racial profiling we see intersect as it relates to people's economic precarity and seeking health care services. But it's also a testament to the fight from organizers, abortion funders, allies, providers, and our state's leadership to take necessary steps to make abortion more accessible in Illinois. Most notably, the passing of HB 40 in 2018, requiring Medicaid coverage of abortion and the passage of the Reproductive Health Act in 2019. We wouldn't be in a position to do this work without that legislation. Illinois has policies that protect abortion access and that is what has allowed us to turn, to in turn expand our support to every person that we reach on our helpline. And it's critical that Illinois has capacity for the estimated 20 to 30,000 more people who will be forced to travel across state lines and come here to access the care that they need. Governor Pritzker has said that he will protect the right to an abortion in our state and we need that commitment now more than ever and we are grateful. We need to expand the pool of health professionals who can provide abortion care. We need dedicated funding for, for, for providers, abortion funds, and the logistical support group. This week, the Chicago Abortion Fund will support over 125 people in accessing care. There is no single story or identity that can articulate the experiences of our callers, and each case is different. However, each of our callers is facing barriers to what should be accessible, affordable, and affirming care. Today's decision means that more people across the U.S. will be facing these barriers in their search for care, either immediately or in the coming months. Abortion funds make access a reality while we are working towards a future where these bans are eradicated where we don't rely on the courts to debate our autonomy, where everyone can access the care they need no matter what, no matter who they are, and no matter where they're from. But we need your support, and we need our community. We are calling on people to use this moment to get in where they fit in, to donate their time or resources to directly get people the care they need in this new reality to stay connected via our newsletters or social media and listen to calls to action from grassroots organizers, on the ground organizations. Let this moment mobilize you. Let this moment move you to sustainably enter this movement in the ways that you can. Join us as we fight for a world where abortion justice is a reality for all. And with that, it's my honor to introduce Colleen Connell of the ACLU. MEG. H A N, last name is D A N I E L. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Colleen Connell. I'm the executive director of the ACLU of Illinois. More than 50 years ago, the ACLU of Illinois filed a lawsuit prior to Roe challenging a restrictive abortion law in Illinois that resulted in the thousands of women going to Ward 41 that Governor Pritzker just referenced. Our doctor who was the plaintiff in that case was the doctor who performed abortions or also helped women in Ward 41 recover from the impact of a dangerous illegal abortion. The Supreme Court's decision today raises the risk again of women being forced into back alleys but the risk doesn't stop there. The court's decision takes aim at the right to birth control. It takes aim at the right to gender affirming care. It takes aim at same sex marriage. It takes aim at all of the fundamental rights that establish the concept of liberty for each of us to make decisions for ourselves about our place in the universe. But let me be clear about one thing. Abortion today remains safe and legal in Illinois. 
and we need to proclaim that message loudly and frequently in every corner of the state. Illinois clinics that provide abortion in the state remain open. Patients who need care at those clinics can continue to make appointments. Nothing the Supreme Court has done today changes that. But it's really important, as so many of the prior speakers have said, to recognize that abortion remains legal in Illinois today because of the hard work done by advocates and our brave leaders, including the governor, including Speaker Welch, including Representative Cassidy, including Senator Bush, including Majority Leader Harris, and every legislator who voted for the Reproductive Health Act, who voted to repeal the Dread Parental Notice of Abortion Act, who voted to expand Medicaid funding for abortions. That brave leadership means that today, people in Illinois have the right to make fundamental health care decisions. It is now our job, reflectively, respectively, to make sure that we keep those rights in place. The ACLU is long known for its motto that eternal vigilance is the price of liberty, and it is. And it's our job to continue that fight, and it's my great honor to be part of the fight with all of the advocates and officials that are on the stage today. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure and privilege now to introduce Moni Ruiz Velasquez um, from Equality Illinois and a longtime warrior in the fight for justice. Buenos dias. My name is Moni Ruiz Velasco. My pronouns are she, her. I am the deputy director at Equality Illinois. Equality Illinois, the state's LGBTQ civil rights organization, is outraged by the U.S. Supreme Court's majority decision in the Dobbs case today, which takes unprecedented steps at overturning almost 50 years of precedent that protect abortion and reproductive health care for women and people who can get pregnant. The Dobbs decision is not only about the denial of abortion and reproductive health care, but about the denial of our bodily autonomy. This decision presents a huge threat to LGBTQ people, not only because of reproductive health care, but because this is the basis of protection that, will, that, uh, will be, uh, that was undone by the court today is the same that protects LGBTQ people against criminalization based on our sexual orientation and our right to marry the person we love. Reproductive rights are LGBTQ rights. And we must stand united with people across the nation denouncing this extremist decision that is taking us back to a time of pre-Roe when abortions were still happening, just happening unsafely, and when many died in the process. Just want to be clear that the court's decision is a frontal attack against LGBTQ communities, against people of color, and against those living in poverty, against immigrant and, and against immigrant communities. Equality Illinois is committed to undoing the harm that is being caused by the Supreme Court's radical decision by continuing to advocate, advocate and lead on pro-choice, pro-LGBTQ state legislation by continuing to organize and mobilize uh, along those of impacted communities and by using our political power to affect change through our vote. To be clear, this decision has a monumental impact on the lives and freedom of women and people who can get pregnant across this country. Um, and I want to invite everyone to join us because it is so important to vote uh, in the coming elections, but it is also important to turn our, our grief and our outrage in the streets. And we will be at Federal Plaza today at 5.30. There is a coalition of organizations, many of them who are here, uh, who will be joining this, e this afternoon at 5.30 at Federal Plaza. So please join us there and join us with your vote, because we need to continue to elect pro-LGBTQ uh, pro and pro-choice candidates uh, here in Illinois and across the country. And now I want to call Governor Pritzker back, who will answer some questions. Thanks. Thank you, Governor. Happy to take any questions from members of the media. Governor, can you explicitly say what you want to be done in this special session? 
Well, we're considering a number of things, including you heard some of them today, expanding the availability of healthcare professionals so that we can manage through what is likely to be an increase in people seeking to exercise their reproductive rights coming to Illinois from other states. That's just one example. So we'll be looking at a variety of things, uh, but that's the purpose of the special session. Do you have any other examples? No, that's a good one. I mean, I think we've got the advocates here, and you heard some of them and the things that they would like to have considered. What about protecting providers who provide services for women? Precisely, and you heard that from the Attorney General. I, I think we're all working together uh, to make progress here. I think we stand united in the, the desire to deal with, you know, this, this is a very new decision, although we saw a draft of it, but didn't know that this was going to be the final result, literally almost exactly what they issued uh, uh, with the leak. Uh, and so we're considering all of the opportunities and we will do, look, I'm the most pro-choice governor in the entire nation. I'm gonna do everything that I can to stand up for women's rights. Does that include additional money for abortion clinics or for new ones? We're looking at all of that. There's been a lot of talk about the politics of the big issue, the need for biblical vote elections. Do you see this ruling as having the possibility to galvanize folks on the other side that enough, get their folks out of the polls either on Tuesday in November and what do you need to do without that energy? They already galvanized. They elected Donald Trump, and you see the result now of the Supreme Court that he put in place. But what about here in Illinois where Republicans are looking to erode the protections? The majority of people, in fact, a strong majority of people in the state of Illinois are pro-choice. Um, we've elected pro-choice legislators. We've elected pro-choice leaders statewide. Um, the people of Illinois want to maintain these rights, and so they are going to act accordingly. I believe that people are going to come out and vote in very big numbers to protect their individual rights. Can you explain the amount of money that Illinois has now to spend on those coming from other states to have abortions here? How many individuals might that cover? Is there any? So we don't provide direct subsidies to people coming from other states. We support the women of Illinois with a, a lot of uh, funding to make sure that they can exercise their rights and their health care. People who come from other states, though, do benefit from the capacity building that we do, from support that we provide to, for, for providers so that they can build their um, professionals, the number of professionals on staff. Uh, and there are, there's more that we can do. But, but let me be clear, I mean, we start first and foremost protecting the people of Illinois and the women of Illinois, and now we are definitely going to see many more people coming to the state even than we saw over the last year. Uh, and we need to make sure that we're ready for that. Yes. Democrats, young Democrats, young left of center voters who say we voted and now this has happened. They're disillusioned. They think that voting doesn't matter. They don't care about the political process. They don't feel like we've won the victory and it doesn't matter at this point. They empathize with that. Come out and march in the streets. Come out and make sure that you get all of your neighbors to get out to vote. That is what I would say. We have to work even harder. Look, some of us were around, uh, you know, on the day of the election in 2016 in November when I think a lot of us didn't think that Donald Trump could get elected president, and he did. And all of us that are standing here decided we're going to work even harder. We're going to work even harder because we have to protect people. And so I would implore young people who are getting involved that this, their rights are being taken away. It's time for them to march in the streets. It's time for them to do their duty to get voters out to vote to protect their rights. We have time for two more. I've got one more. There's people, smart people, political scientists who are comparing this moment to the pre-Civil War era and an era of American race relations. Do you think the stakes are that high? How do you view the Democrats and the leaders? Well, they've just taken away rights from more than half of the population of the United States. So is this serious? Is this one of the worst things that's, that, that, is this one of the worst things that's happened in our lifetimes that the Supreme Court has done? I have not, I've been alive 57 years. They haven't taken away rights in my entire lifetime. Today they took away rights and they're aiming to take away more rights. They've indicated that in the decision. How do you stop the Supreme Court from doing that? Do, do Democrats who are in control of Washington right now need to look at adding more justice? What do you do to prevent this? If you're really 
Well, in the elections that are coming up, we all across the country, we need to elect pro-choice legislators and pro-choice governors because this has been handed back to the states to make decisions about. And there are states that can flip Democratic uh, and pro-choice, most importantly. I don't know any pro-choice pro Republicans that are running for office in Illinois. I don't know about in the rest of the country, but I can tell you that Democratic governors and Democratic legislators will preserve women's right to choose. So does it then work with Sanders? That's not up to me, and that's something that's going to be decided, I suppose, at the federal level. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.